how's this for a holiday with a difference? Two weeks on your own yacht cruising the Greek islands and the Turkish coast. Clear skies, blue water, gentle winds and temperatures in the high 20s. And every night, a secure berth for your yacht only a few steps from restaurants, shops and bars. On this holiday of a lifetime with Mariner Boating Holidays, you'll sail back into history, discover new places, experience different cultures, explore remote islands, shop at the most unusual places, taste traditional cuisines, drink local wines, race against your fellow sailors and, if you feel like it, dance until dawn. This annual Aegean Yacht Rally truly is a voyage of discovery and fun that takes you through the Greek Dodecanese Islands and along the Mediterranean coast of Turkey. You board your charter yacht from offshore sailing at the marina in the Turkish coastal city of Kushadasi, before sailing to the Greek islands of Samos, Arki, Patmos and Kalimnos and others in between. You then head back into Turkey to Bodrum and along the Turkish coast via Knidos, Palamut, Dacha, Adabol, Bazuk Buku and Chifle to journey's end at Marmaris. Throughout the trip, you're in the capable hands of Maggie and Trevor Joyce, founders of Mariner Boating Holidays, who lived and sailed in Greece for several years in the 70s and 80s. Travelling on board the support vessel with Trevor and Maggie is the wonderful Metin Shaka, a local Turk who is a senior technician with offshore sailing and a man who's always there when you need him. Just like Trevor and Maggie, Metin is happy to share his knowledge of the area and its people and, as you'll soon discover, all three of them also enjoy a good time. For most people in the Aegean Yacht Rally, the first chance of meeting your fellow sailors is at Istanbul Airport after your Singapore Airlines flight from Australia. It may be early morning at the airport, but the bars are open and there's plenty of Turkish beer and coffee before everyone is getting back on a plane again. This time for a very restful local flight to Izmir. From Izmir Airport, it's a bus ride through the Turkish countryside to our first overnight stop in the historic coastal town of Kushadasi, renowned for its eating, nightlife and bargain shopping. As this will be your first night together with all your sailing companions, there are welcome cocktails at sunset on the hotel terrace which overlooks the yacht's berth below in Kushadasi's large modern marina. A traditional Turkish dinner with plenty of food and wine follows the cocktail party and gives you another opportunity to get to know each other. After all, you'll be travelling together for two weeks. There's also a bit of housekeeping tonight. First, you have to hand over your passport for entry into Greece the following day. And secondly, Trevor introduces his team and tempts you with the adventures that lie ahead. You'll also be given a folder in a minute which will solve a lot of mysteries like what are we doing tomorrow and when are we doing it and so forth and so on. Just be patient. Next morning is day one of your yachting holiday and it starts at the hotel with a briefing for skippers. This may be a fun holiday, but the sailing is taken very seriously with daily weather and navigation checks. The briefing over, it's down to the marina to locate your yacht and step on board for what will be your home for the next two weeks. Your first day's sail is an easy afternoon cruise that takes you from Kushadasi across to the nearby Greek island of Samos, where your berth in the historic port of Pythagoran, birthplace of Pythagoras. At night, there's a getting to know you dinner at a local taverna hosted by Trevor and Maggie, who once again give you a taste of what's to come. The next day, day two, is a lay day that is spent in Samos. You're free to go walking, swimming or shopping for exquisite local jewellery or hiring a car to explore this mountainous and wooded island with lunch at one of its picturesque mountain villages. Day three is our first race day, and it starts with a leisurely sail and then a race to the tiny island of Arki. With a population of 60 people, 200 goats, and the odd fisherman with his brightly coloured boat and nets, Arki is a photographer's heaven. Berthing is tight here, so you may have to raft up, which is a good excuse for a drink and a chat with your neighbours. 
Aki is so small, you can easily explore it on foot. And as soon as the sun goes down, it's a short walk across the stone promenade to one of only two tavernas on the island for the first of what will be six post-race dinners. With the owner, Manolis and Trevor in control, it's a memorable night. Next morning is day four, a lay day, and we sail from Aki to one of the local islands for lunch and a swim. We then continue on to the amazing island of Patmos, spiritual headquarters of the Greek Orthodox Church and the site of an 11th century hilltop monastery with its own village of winding lanes. History aside, Patmos is also an island of excellent tavernas, shopping, nightlife and bars, just the place for a group of Aussie sailors. Day five is a race day, which starts with a leisurely cruise from Patmos to Pandeli before a race down the east coast of the islands of Leros and Kalimnos, where you'll sail through a spectacular steep-sided fjord to the tiny village of Vati. Waiting to greet you are the island's very agile goats who literally cling to the steep rock sides and watch you as you sail past. At Varti, you once again moor your boat only metres from the promenade and tavernas, and just a few minutes walk from the shops and stalls selling sponges which are still fished in the area. Time may stand still in Varti, but at night there's plenty of action at Poppy's Taverna where there's another post-race dinner and plenty of dancing. If you recover sufficiently from Poppy's dancing, you can spend day six, a lay day, walking the narrow streets of Varti. Or catching a bus for the 20 minute drive along the picturesque coast to the main port of Kalimnos, which is home to what must be the world's only museum dedicated to sponges. On day seven, we're racing again, but it begins with a leisurely morning cruise from Kalimnos through the shipping lanes to our last Greek lunch stop at sea, where you'll hand over your passport to the support vessel for re-entry into Turkey. It's then a race to the ancient Turkish port of Bodrum, which is so big and busy that you're personally escorted to your berth. Later, there are drinks outside at the yacht club overlooking the marina, followed by a little shopping and dinner. The medieval city of Bodrum with its vast crusader castle is the perfect place to relax and spend the lay day of day eight. It's a city of real contrasts. The ancient castle, designer stores, tree-lined promenades, a bustling bazaar and more than 200 boom boom bars and restaurants. There's certainly no problem finding somewhere different for dinner. The morning of day nine, a race day, sees you sailing from Bodrum to the ancient city of Knidos where the statue of Aphrodite, the world's first statue of a naked woman, was found. After lunch, it's a race along the coast to Palamut village. Palamut is a one dog sort of place with a dirt road and a friendly greengrocer who sells his produce from the back of his truck, which he parks right next to your yacht. At night on Palamut, you'll be able to taste some of the more traditional Turkish food at the post-race dinner, which is held at a local restaurant that grows all its own vegetables in its own small market garden. The following morning, day 10, a lay day, is again very leisurely as all you have to do is sail along the coast to Dacha, where you moor once again only metres from all the restaurants and bars. Dacha is full of shops selling everything and anything Turkish, including of course, lots and lots of carpets. On our last visit to Dacha, we brought local culture right to the quay with a group of local school children who first entertained and then involved the crew in traditional Turkish dancing. On the next day, day 11, which is a race day, we head off for lunch and a swim in spectacular Atabol Bay before an afternoon race along the coast. The race brings us to Bazuk Buku by late afternoon, just in time for some colourful Turkish shopping right at the jetty. On sale are bright fabrics, clothes and jewellery which the local merchants sell straight from their boats or from the jetty itself. You can bargain as much as you like, but it's strictly cash only.
That night at Bazook Buku, there's yet another after-race dinner at the local Lorima restaurant. And this time, each course of simple local food is cooked outside on a barbecue overlooking the yachts. It's an idyllic beach setting that will encourage you to relax or to try some local dance steps. With the end of the trip now in sight, day 12, a lay day, sees us sailing from Bazook Buku up the Marmaris Peninsula. First stop is lunch anchored on the brilliant blue waters in the ancient harbour of Serche. There's even time here to get one of the locals to row you ashore for a coffee at the only taverna. And walk up the hill to a pirate's cave with its spectacular view over the splendid harbour. Then it's back to your yacht for a brisk sail to Chiflik for our second last night of the journey. In Chiflik, there's a choice of restaurants for dinner and if you're lucky enough, you'll choose one where the staff won't let you leave until they've taught you how to dance. The next day, day 13, we head for Marmaris where we lunch on board before our last race around the boys in the harbour. This triangular course race, like all the others, is run under what Trevor calls TITS, or Trevor's International Timing System. Marmaris is a shopper's delight, with a large covered bazaar. But the real action on our last night is at the offshore sailing marina, where everyone is expected to arrive in local dress for the final dinner and presentation. <laughs> The inaugural CYCA Aegean Yacht Rally winner under Trevor's TIT system was Anka, a very sprightly Genoa Sun Odyssey 52.2, skippered by Don Telford and his wife Fiona and the fabulous four crew from Melbourne, Annette, Anthea, David and Del. This last night is truly a Turkish affair with plenty of dancing and plenty of food, most of which is cooked outside on the barbecue. There's also a local band, an enthusiastic group of traditional dancers and a belly dancer who is only too happy to give lessons, even to the men. It's the sort of night you will never forget, but sadly, it also signals the end of our sailing holiday. Next morning, day 14, is our last day and you are back on the bus for the local airport and a flight to Istanbul for a night or two in that amazing city. Or it may be it's a side trip to Gallipoli, or even the ancient city of Troy. The choice, as they say, is yours.